Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Wednesday. Uh, I'm Sally Spiro with No Kid Hungry, and we're going through CEP week with a series of short videos we hope you will find helpful. Today, we're going to talk about CEP and CBO, and I was tempted to put, can they live together happily ever after, but I didn't. So, okay, let's get started. Now, we uh, almost all of us are going to report to the CBO. And in my career, I've had CBOs who were very casual. You know, they drop by your office, you get out some cookies, you chat away. Uh, and other ones, you have to go to their office and they would have a big scary desk. Uh, you'd have to sit behind a little tiny chair. But no matter what, we have to understand their perspective. The first thing is that the CEO is responsible for every budget in the district. Not just your budget, the special ed budget, the transportation fund, the bond fund. So they have lots of responsibilities all across the district. They are very used to balancing the needs of multiple parties as they look at what has to finally happen. So maybe the transportation department comes and says, we could save money if we ran the bus routes this way. And then the principals come in and say, well, we can't run the, that, that way because that means we won't have uh, our early morning tutoring because the bus will be getting there right at the time the kids are there and that's gonna put us behind. And so the CBO has to kind of balance that and they have to balance what you wanna do with the other needs of the district. So just kind of keep that in mind. Obviously, they are responsible for fiscal integrity, which means they have to make everything balance. You know, like you can't uh, run up a credit card like you, you can when you go on vacation. It has to be, you know, completely balanced and, and everything accounted for. I've heard many CBOs say this. You can have anything you want, but not everything you want. Remember, they have to balance. So what can we do to be sure that CEP is included in the everything that they want? Here's some ideas. Now, the big one is the free and reduced price meal data. And it's the elephant in the room and it's the big thing on their mind. And I recommend that you just tackle it head on at the beginning because you are not gonna wanna say, I don't have to buy pin pads. And all they're thinking is Title I funding. Or you say, we're going to serve lunch faster. And they're thinking Title I funding. So you want to just get that tackled right away so they can hear what else you have to say. So here's some things that you can point out to them. First of all, the direct certification information is not going to change. Uh, they're still going to have all that. So if you have a district that has 50%, direct certifications that you want to put on CEP. Remember, those 50% data are still going to be available to them. Another thing is in any district, there's going to be some families that just aren't going to qualify. They're, they're just not. They make too much money. Uh, you know, they're living off their investments or, or what have you. So say in your district, that's another 15% who would never qualify no matter what. So you take the 50 and the 15 and you get to 65% where that's done. So you only have 35 left to play with. In the past, we've relied on meal application data to get that 35% sorted. Everybody knows that it is not a reliable way to get that data. There are some families, yes, indeed, who will fill out the application because they want the meal benefits. And there are some families who will never fill out the meal application, even if they qualify, because they don't want the meal benefit or they don't want everybody to know about their finances or for any other reason. So you're always missing people. There are other options that are now available to get that information. And I've researched this enough to know that they are different in every single state what the state requires, what they want you to do. So before you go meet with your CBO, 
you need to ask your state agency what is allowed in your state and have that information for that meeting. Now, the CBO may already know that, but he or she is going to appreciate that you have thought about their needs and how you can support them and what they need to do to hopefully get them to support you in what you need to do. Now that we've hopefully settled them down, let's talk about the child nutrition program. The materials that you presented uh, yesterday or worked on yesterday is now what you can take there to the meeting and review your financial planning data. You will know your CBO if they want a whole lot of detail or they just want the big picture, whatever that person needs, but be sure that you have brought in a thorough plan that includes any financial benefits. Don't forget about not having money from the general fund. Um, so, you know, you have, maybe your plan is that our income is going to stay about the same, but we're going to shift it around. Or maybe we think it's going to increase uh, our income and our process costs are going to stay stable. Or maybe we're going to see a slight decrease, but it, we're still going to be financially viable. Whatever it is, you want to do that. And you want to have your CBO as an ally when you are presenting this to the board. You do not, you would really like to have the CBO go and tell the board, here is Mrs. Spiro who has come up with a wonderful plan to make our district better, as opposed to them saying to the board, here's Mrs. Spiro, here's her plan. You know, think it over. I think it's kind of harebrained. You don't want that. You want the CBO on your side. Now, a lot of times we wonder, should we do CEP if we can't do it for the whole district? Well, you know, I was very influenced in my younger days by the movie Officer and a Gentleman. And at the end of it, Richard Gere comes in and he's wearing a white uniform and he grabs Deborah Winger up and he takes her out of that lousy factory while the music blares. And it's a very, very happy ending. And waiting until all the schools are going to be eligible for CEP is probably like waiting for Richard Gere to come and get me, who I must admit never did. So even if you can't do CEP everywhere, there are some advantages to doing it in just in parts of the district. The first thing, it's still going to reduce the paperwork for the families. It's still going to be easier to manage than the traditional national school lunch program. So even if you are going from a thousand applications to 600 applications, it's saving some work. Um, it's still going to increase participation for the students that are eligible. And as I said, there's never going to be a time when all of your schools qualify for CEP. So if the CBO says, well, we'll wait till everybody qualifies, you're gonna be waiting forever. And you might as well do the things that you could do within your scope. And Richard, I'm still here if you're looking for me. Okay, even though our CEO, CBO deals with money, they have a heart too, supposedly. And there's things that they're interested in. So it's a good time to point out that CEP supports student health and attendance. Districts like to provide resources for their families. That's something that um, gives people a better impression of the district. It leads to better customer service and CEP can definitely help with that. You're going to have fewer complaints from uh, kids that are hungry, kids that they lost their lunch money. Um, a lot of times um, behavior problems are better when students are better nourished. And really, we want to have all the programs in the district be programs that we can be proud of. And CEP can help with that in terms of making it a district that people are happy to have their children go to. We have lots of resources to help you, including some tips on financial considerations for the business officials and 
letters that you can send out and very good to check out that what you need to know about title funding. They're all on our CEP resources online. We hope you stay in touch with us and sign up for our newsletter. And you can also visit the best practices website at No Kid Hungry. I hope that I will see you tomorrow and we're gonna talk about maximizing your ISP. Thanks a lot for being here today.